So many of us, when we buy a new home or we get a new allotment, we also inherit an old shed. But what do we do to transform something that's falling apart into a feature and an asset for the garden? This is how I transformed a dilapidated old shed into a potting shed that is not only attractive, but safe and functional for here in the home garden. Two months ago, we bought a new house and I've been sharing that journey with you of seeing it for the first time, of doing a few projects around the house, mainly cleaning up. Essentially, it's a large space. We have a half an acre and over the next year in particular, I'm going to be looking at the land and putting in a lot of beds, a lot of different projects. But there were some things here already that needed work. There was a greenhouse and I've cleaned it, sparkling clean, and I'm using it right now to grow tomatoes in, my seedlings, and just have that extra space that's warm and nurturing for seedlings. There's also been a lot of junk left at the house and I spent a week really just cleaning things out of the hedges and piling it all up and Josh and I took the majority of that to the recycle center. There is also a shed on the property and I opened the doors for the first time and there were cobwebs and spiders and junk. The floor absolutely rotten. I stepped through it in a couple of places, just really unsafe. And I told you in that initial tour around the property when I showed it to you for the first time, that I wanted to get a new shed. Well, your comments on that video and also the price of timber made up my mind and I decided to give it a go, to do as much as I can to get the, sh the shed into ship shape condition so that I can use it again. But before I get to what Josh and I have been working on over the past two weeks, I'd like to share with you what the shed looked like before. But we've got this shed here in the meanwhile, and I think I'm going to put it up on Facebook to give away and get a new one. And the old guy who used to live here had a little poke around on the last day and took what he wanted out. And then there's lots of stuff just left in here from over the years. Lots and lots of junk. Some old tools, pots, old shears. It's crazy. It's crazy the things that you can just leave behind. So yes, I really just wanted to get rid of the old shed and get a new one. But I'm so pleased that I didn't because the end effects, which I'll share with you in just a little bit, are amazing. I'm really, really pleased. So the first thing was clearing out the shed and I've already shared that with you. All of the stuff that I took out of here, I went through it, tidied it, tried to take down as many of the cobwebs as possible. You will not believe the amount of spiders that were living in here and no doubt we'll move back in. I don't have a problem with spiders, but if you don't like spiders, you will definitely not like old ramshackle sheds. I'm telling you this. So after it was all cleared out, it was a case of tackling that rotten floor. And I stepped through it twice when I was clearing the shed out. And I'm fortunate to have not hurt myself but one thing that a shed should have is a good solid floor and that could just be concrete, it could be packed earth, or it could be a raised wooden floor. So I spent the good part of an afternoon ripping out the old floor and most of it was really easy because it, the wood was so riddled with woodworm that it just broke. There were pieces that were a bit more difficult that I really had to, to yank on it. I was sweating by the end of it, but I got the floor up. That was a good bit of exercise. The majority of the rotten shed floor is here, and this is what's left. Not as much junk as I thought would be under here. There are some 
burrows from rodents. You can see where they've come in from this outside and probably overwintered here. There's a lot of rotten wood. Even the base walls are a bit rotten. It's mainly wood woodworm. It's clear that the wood that the shed is made out of is either really old and or wasn't really treated against woodworm. So I'm not sure how long this structure will last. It will last a little bit longer, but I will have to put in a brand new floor. And with that floor, it will need to be completely self-supporting and the shed will need to just basically emerge from around the sides of the floor. And I'm going to try to put in a few more supports. You can see the, the shed is actually being supported by bricks and some cinder blocks. So I need to find some more and try to wedge them under those walls. You can use all kinds of materials to rebuild a floor. You can use pallet wood, you could use other types of reclaimed wood, you could put in other types of materials as well. What I chose to do was to go with brand new pressure treated wood. And I did that because I wanted to create a safe floor that was elevated so in line with the original shed floor and also this structure definitely has woodworm and or wood wood boring beetle and they'll get back into wood that hasn't been pressure treated and they'll just munch through the wood and then i could have a, a case of stepping through another floorboard and maybe injuring myself in a couple years time i don't know so i decided to go with new wood I was also fortunate that Josh came home early one afternoon from work, finished up a job, and he could help to put in the floor. It's really handy because Josh is a floor layer and he has all the tools, including the saw and the undercutting tool. And so he spent, I would say, an hour and a half, maybe two hours max, whereas I would have probably spent the entire day <laughs> trying to sort it out and he built the frame. We got it as level as possible. I'd also place some stones and bricks underneath to try to create a bit more of a foundation for that frame. And then Josh did an excellent job of putting down the ply. And so immediately after, I had a good solid floor that I could stand on, feel safe in here, and to start the next job. The shed and the wood that makes this shed up is pretty old. It's been beaten by the weather. It's been munched by insects. It's crumbling in places, but what was left of it, I really needed to protect. And so that means painting it. I had a look at the wood beforehand and had actually thought to maybe paint it with some boiled linseed oil first, but I don't think that this wood is really going to last any more than five years anyway. So what I did was I completely cleaned it out again, tried again to get all of the dirt and all of the cobwebs, everything that I could off of the walls, and then I started painting it. And a few weeks ago I asked what color should I paint my shed? and I'd like to share with you now. I can hardly remember what this shed looked like before, but I do remember it didn't look as good as this. It was actually kind of scary. I want to show you all around the shed and inside as well. First of all, blue. I know a lot of people submitted different color ideas and color combos, and I looked at them and I think every shade in the rainbow was suggested but in the end I wanted to go with something that was going to brighten up this corner that wasn't going to be too bright I guess but vibrant enough and I, I also love blue it's my favorite color and so I chose this barley wood blue color and I absolutely love it. One of the main reasons for painting the shed is so it looks nice, but it's also to protect the wood until time comes that I get a new shed because I want this shed to last as long as it can. And I think that this Cupronol paint will do the trick. 
and because the the object of the game is to protect the wood I painted every surface so even places that I'm not going to see on a regular basis like the back of the shed here and the side as well we'll crawl back here and have a look around the other side and there are windows on the side as well I painted them white around the borders and I love the effect and it actually reminded me when I was a, a kid my friend had a blue house with white trim and I loved it. I absolutely loved it and it brought back that memory and I finally have a blue house with white trim. Let's have a look on the inside now. I've not done any replacing of windows. There are some cracks like you can see here and this top window over here isn't even glass but I suppose it adds to the character. The doors open up quite wide. You can see the new floor in there. You can also see that it's looking beat up already. And we discovered after we put it in, you see there's a, a damp patch right there, that there is actually quite a big leak up on the roof. So that's the next project for the shed is repairing that leak. And it's just a, a matter of patching up the felt, the roofing felt that's on the top. The wood that makes up the sides of the shed looked like that. I haven't painted the roof. And so two coats of white brightened it up for sure, but there are still patches of brown. I actually kind of like the effect. And those windows just look so much brighter. A good clean, a good wash, that edging with white, and it looks great. You can look out in the distance and you can see the flooring is still there. We'll be taking a load to the recycle center soon. But in the meantime, I need to do some more things inside the shed so that I can move all of my things, which are just outside there, back in here and get it all organized really well. This window here looks down towards the greenhouse. I can keep an eye on my tomatoes. And just looking at the floor again, can see the the paint here that I used just looking at the floor again Josh undercut these I guess battens at the side and slid the plywood right up as far as he could against the the wall of the shed there are still some areas though that need work down here as you can see we are not completely tight here so there's a lot of rotten wood at the corners and so we're going to have to put in a bit more wood to repair these areas this side over here is particularly bad so we're going to need to not only put a support up the side but put another plank in from the outside as well let's have a look inside now because i've been moving a few things back inside the shed and it's beginning to feel very homely inside. My stool is there. I have a little shelf that I've had in my office and that will come in handy. Things are not in their permanent positions, by the way. It just kind of wherever it fit at the time. I have a couple of tools hanging on the wall. And I, I like that effect actually. And those tools in the back there, those were tools that were actually in the shed. I have tons more that are down in the garage under the house at the moment and I'm loving the effect. Over here in this area it's all a bit cluttered at the moment but this is where a potting bench will go hopefully in the next couple of weeks and I do need to figure out some storage for canes and and sticks and things like that but overall I love the effect and I can really see some good potting up and, and seed sowing work happening in here in winter and on rainy days. So I have a beautiful blue and white shed now. And I use a type of paint that's specifically for outdoor furniture, for fences, for sheds. It's called Cuprinol and I got barley wood 
as the blue color and just a, a basic white. I think it was white daisy for the interior. And the idea is that the white interior will brighten up the space and the outside is vibrant and beautiful, but it will sit back here in the corner and won't be too intrusive with the plantings and the greenhouse, etc. I absolutely love the color. I'm over the moon with it. And now I'm at a place now where I have this beautiful shed that I could use for anything really, but it does really need to be a potting shed because that's the space that I really do need back here. So back to reality though, <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff sitting out in the garden right now, trays and pots and tools and all kinds of things that need to live in here. So the next step will be to build a potting bench and I'm going to be placing it over here on this side of the shed. And with that project, it will definitely be made out of pallet woods. So keep an eye out for that video in the coming weeks and I'll be sharing exact, exactly how I break planks apart and how I use them for other pallet projects. You've seen me do pallet planters on here before. I've, I have a pallet truck. I've, I make all kinds of things out of pallets and reclaim wood. So if you're interested in that as well, keep an eye out for it. So this is my new old shed and I love it but I'd like to know what you think about it as well. So please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the color, if you have any more ideas for it, and also what you thought about the process. And also let me know if you have renovated a shed as well and anything that you've learned because any kind of information like that will be really important for people who might find this video and are interested in salvaging their own shed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.